Welcome to another Zoomcast. John Abendroth here, PJ Golf Professional. And uh, joining me today is uh, Walter Chun with uh, Cal Berkeley Men's Golf Program and uh, Conrad Ray. And uh, you'll notice by my shirt here, is I've got my Weber State shirt on. I didn't want to be, uh, be uh, you know, taken advantage of or bullied. So uh, I thought I'd uh, bring this out of the, uh, the far end of the closet. So uh, good stuff there. Let me get a little of the business out of the way first. Uh, brought to you today by Original Joes of Westlake and watch for their Little Joes soon to open in the West Portal District of San Francisco. And by my neighbors, Baggies Liquors in Burlingame since 1958. An excellent value on wine, beer, and spirits. Eat and drink responsibly, as I like to say. And uh, the formal introduction, uh, Walter Chun, the Alex and Marie Shipman Director of Men's Golf, Cal Berkeley, and uh, Con Ray, the Knowles Family Director of Men's Golf at Stanford University, and the Interim General Manager. So uh, do you have one of those uh, cards that sort of flips open like a green card, Conrad? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I need a couple of <laughs> you know, John, it's good to be with a uh, state shirt on. You know, we have to talk about your stroke average if you're wearing your, your school colors. So <laughs> we didn't keep very close stats back then, but uh, let's just say that they, uh, that <laughs> they, they, they knew I was there and the uh, conference knew I was there. Uh, when I beat Craig Stadler in Riverside to win a tournament, he knew I was there. And uh, so um, anyway, it was a fun experience for me. Well done. Way, well way back, way back in 1974 when I graduated. So uh, we'll we'll get the we'll get the age thing out of the way. So uh, so fun stuff there. <laughs> let let me uh, let great. me go with with records first um, on an individual basis. So we got to start with Walter with uh, the the tremendous victory for Colin Morikawa, uh, your alum at 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 TPC Harding Park, winning the. PGA Championship on a course he had played in a city nearby uh, in his home state. Wow, what a what a victory, Walter! Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun to to watch. Uh, you know, any I've been growing up watching tons of major championships, and it always gets exciting on the the back nine. And to see Colin pull it out um, on the back nine at uh, a course close by. I just wish there could have been some fans. I would have been out there probably yelling as loud as I was in my living room. And, you know, it's interesting. I think at one point there was something like five or six people tied with about five or six holes to play. And, you know, there was sort of a shoe to drop. I didn't know he'd drop both of them. You know, the, the great <laughs> shot on 14 and then the, uh, the huge drive on 16, which uh, uh, were, were just amazing that one player would pull off the two uh, – amazing shots there uh, coming down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was such a huge chip in on 14 to kind of slowly separate himself. And then uh, I, it was funny. It was, I think he was on 16, so you could see the 15 green. And I think he saw Paul Casey um, knock it pretty close on 15. And then he just stepped up big time and hit a perfect golf shot on 16 and left himself a seven footer up the hill. And, you know, he, he canned it. So that was a, a huge moment. And, 17 and 18 aren't any, any bargains either. So I was biting my nails, whatever I had left on those last few holes. And 18 was kind of nerve wracking because he saw on his second shot, he seemed, he didn't like the shot and he kind of had a one-handed finish. And we know that there's some water left of the green there, but um, thanks, thankfully kind of played smart and he pulled it a little bit and pulled it right at the pin. <laughs> yeah. And, and Conrad, uh, I, I like to talk about current news, like to feel I'm up to date. Uh, the question that everybody's asking, has Charlie Woods been on campus for a recruiting visit yet? <laughs> we're getting the papers ready, John. Yeah, need to see uh, Tiger in action. We were talking about that earlier this week. I, that might be as nervous as Tiger's going to feel, you know, all year when his 11-year-old uh, turns up at the tournament and has some high expectations for dad to make some birdies in, the, in their tournament over the holidays, so. Need to see Charlie doing well in the game and fun to see Tiger being a dad and, and supporting him in that way. Well, that's going to be so much fun. And, and I think people have, like I think you alluded to, that Tiger's going to be more nervous than uh, maybe coming down the stretch at the Open or the U.S. Open. And uh, so that'll be that'll be fun to watch. And Charlie will get a lot of airtime. So uh, so that'll be that'll be very cool. Let's talk about Brandon Wu. I, I, if I recall my my memory correctly, that uh, 
He finishes the U.S. Open at Pebble uh, now a year and a half ago or so, uh, gets his diploma there. And, and now he's, he's the winner on the Corn Ferry Tour and, uh, and, and moving in the right direction. So uh, uh, he had a, he had a, yeah. he's got a very nice year. Yeah, we're excited about Brandon's progress. You know, he won the Corn Ferry Tour Championship, which is a huge feather in his cap. Had a, a couple other close calls. Has had some good starts on the PGA Tour. Um, he's in a good position if he plays solidly. Uh, you know, it's an interesting pandemic year with the Corn Ferry because of this. They have 44 events to look at. And uh, it was fun to spend the week with him last week as well um, at Pebble Beach and seeing how much progress he's made with his game. So I think there's there's nothing but good things ahead for Brandon. And and, uh, you know, we've got some young guys out there really working hard to, to get out on the on the big show. And Maverick McNeely's, you know, had a, a great run of made cuts and, you know, he's been fun to watch. So uh, so great stuff there. Walter. Uh, when I met with the, uh, we had the women on yesterday, by the way, Conrad, and had a lot of fun with them as, as we had over the 26 years with the, uh, the radio show. Um, one topic I got into with them, and I'll, I'll go through this with both of you. Uh, Walter, you're, you're, uh, you've got an interesting roster when you look at the geography. Fremont, California, China, Washington, Southern California, and Japan. And, you know, I think a lot of our viewers would be curious you know, how that all stacks up, you know, are there many players on campus? Did many of them, were they able to head home? What are they doing with their games? Are they playing some of the, the amateur events? Um, give us a little uh, perspective there. Um, so I've got 13 guys on the team and I'd say as many as seven came back to, to campus. Uh, the ones in Florida, mo most of the kids, even though it says they're from China or Thailand, they're, they're in the U.S. They're, they're either in Florida or Southern California. And most of them, um, the ones in Florida, like Aaron Dew and Samson, um, they stayed out in Florida. But there are some young guys a little bit closer from Southern California that decided to drive up and spend time on campus. Um, but when the weather got cooler and colder, um, all of them went back home to their families. And so only the local young men are, are around town. Um, Aaron Chen, Brendan High, Benigan Tilly and Sebastian Igpal. Um, I think they just wanted to, to see their friends. You know, they had been home since March and then with school starting, they just wanted to, to, to spend time with their friends and um, play some golf around here. Um, and, and some of them played in tournaments, you know, I, I couldn't require, I couldn't ask of them to go out and travel, but um, thankfully some of them did, while others, others didn't, you know, it's, it's a weird year and, you know, you got to accommodate what's best for them and their, their families and respect their parents' wishes. So some, some, some came in town, some never came in town, some played and some just studied. <laughs> yeah, good. And same topic for Conrad. Conrad, you've got a very eclectic uh, international group. You've got Southern California, England, Australia, New York, Florida, and Pakistan. So you've got a, uh, my goodness, what an yeah. international spread you got there. Yeah, we, we have an international crowd for sure. We, um, as Walter mentions, a lot of the kids that we have in our lineup, even though they list foreign places as their birthplace, which is correct, a lot of them have, have had a pathway to college golf uh, through the U.S. system, uh, have spent a considerable amount of time in the States, which is, um, which is great. And, uh, but, it, but I think that that's the beauty of our two institutions, John. You know, we attract kids from all over the world that want to play high-level college golf and, and get a world-class education. And I know both Stanford and um, California Berkeley are places that, that draw from all, all the corners of the, of the globe, which is a cool thing. And it helps us as coaches really – find the best players too you know there's um believe it or not there's some great golfers in Kazakhstan and uh, we've got one of them yeah very, and it's not a Barat or one of those type of guys I guess <laughs> <laughs> well he Dalet Dalet Tulabaya kind of acts like Borat once in a while but uh you know we we we're got we've got him training hard and um you know it's great because I think um you know, it just it just shows and speaks well to what college golf is doing, that those types of players with a lot of options really feel like the best place for them to develop and get an education is in the U.S. college system. And and I think that's a, a credit to coaches like, you know, Coach Coach Walter and and uh, other guys around the country doing a great job and being super competitive. Walter, a topic that, you know, I'm curious about professional golf seemed to be one of the most successful sports 
coming back to competition during the COVID year that we've had. But college golf and the NCAA seems to be much more restrictive. And, you know, the women yesterday explained to me that, for example, they would only allow like two players in a, in a minivan to travel. Uh, and, and maybe that's the whole thing, that, 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 that type of thing that shuts the whole thing down. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think at the professional level, whether it's the NFL, NBA, or the PGA, they just have a lot more resources. Um, they just have financial resources or uh, manpower resources. And, you know, at college institutions, we, we just were not at that financial resource level to test every day. Um, you know, there, there's lots of other um, staff at Cal that have other um, responsibilities and so I think it just comes down to, to resources and um, also just safety. I think most of the schools are going to err on the side of um, caution to protect our student athletes, whereas the professionals, they're, they're, they're adults. You know, they, they, at, at, while college students are theoretically adults, um, you know, they may not make the, the best decisions. So the school is going to do what they can to, to take care of the, the health and well-being of student athletes, whereas on the professional circuit, they're, they're adults. They, they have families, they, that's their livelihood. And Conrad, you got to see both sides of it with the same, I know you've probably been through the same ideas as, uh, as Walter explained, but uh, you played in a, a professional event uh, recently at Pebble Beach, the tailor-made Pebble Beach Invitational, uh, which is sort of the, the, the third tour event that is played there. Uh, after the at and and the, uh, the, corn, or the uh, Champions Tour event. Um, how was your experience there going through the COVID uh, restrictions and getting ready to pick, et cetera? Yeah, John, that's a great question. I, I think they did, a, they did a, a very good job feeling, you know, keeping people safe and making people feel safe. Um, and I agree with Coach, Coach Chun. I think that uh, you know, it is about resources and who's taking the risk, right, or carrying the risk. And I think as higher education institutions, you know, we carry that risk for our student athletes and, and uh, we, we owe it to our student athletes to fall on the side of caution, even though we all want to be out there walking the fairways and, and representing our schools. Um, you know, I, I think I, I'm cautiously optimistic. I think, you know, we as coaches have been working hard to put schedules together for our guys starting the first of the year. Um, I see the Pac-12 conference and other conferences around the country understanding that there is a difference between playing college golf and college football and college basketball, as an example. So, you know, I think we can execute, but I, I think we have to do that safely. And it's hard right now, today, to have those conversations in really a, a deeper fashion when, when the numbers are doing what they're doing. But I think we're going to be, um, we've learned a lot. Um, I think we're going to be doing it safely and soundly. And golf is a great sport to to be able to, you know, I, I, weirdly, I think the pandemic has helped golf. It's helped. I think we're going to see a wave of junior golfers in five years from now that are going to be hitting our, our sheets that probably started playing during the pandemic because there's nothing else to do. Um, you know, and so, uh, you know, I think it, all things considered, we'll make it out on the other side and we'll hopefully be better off for it. Yeah, that's great stuff. Well, let's wrap it up here with the our, our usual, uh, the usual question, let's get a couple of football scores and uh, a, an unusual Friday afternoon uh, big game. But, uh, you know, that'll be a, a great thing to have for, uh, uh, for the community and both, both schools to have this to, uh, to hang their hat on. Walter, how about a couple of numbers from you? Cal 31, Stanford 28. Wow, it's going to be a real, real barn burner down to the end, I guess. <laughs> And Conrad, I, I should also comment that uh, you're not at the old Winterland Coliseum uh, for a music concert with the light show going on. You're uh, you're uh, yeah. at the Tahoe, and you're you, you're going through uh, uh, some trees with the sun, and um, and then you got Pebble Beach behind you. So, uh, welcome to the Zoom world. <laughs> I guess I stumped Conrad. I mean, Conrad, you still got how about it this? I didn't expect this, but my uh, uncle pilot. Uh, yeah, I've got you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Um, I, I just wanted to say that, uh, yeah, that we're, dr we're driving away. So thanks for putting up with me, John. Zoom is our new part of our life. But um, I'm going to pick a score. Stanford winning um, five to seven. 
Stanford's going to break out of their offensive slumber a little bit this week. So you go you, hard. You broke up 20, 24-7? 35-7 for me, John. <laughs> 35-7. Wow. I better take, yeah. Yeah. take the over if it's, you know, that's a big, that's a big one there. Hey, guys, thank you so much. Uh, have a great holiday. And uh, appreciate all the great work you do for these great institutions and the sports departments. And uh, you've, you've all turned out a lot of great, great players. And, uh, and I know you've got some, uh, you know, great coaches that, that you, you look up to from, you know, the previous coaches at the universities. And uh, it's uh, fun, fun watching the results as we, uh, as we stay in touch with you guys. Thanks, John. Happy Thanks, John. Day. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. All right, we'll Thank sign off here, and uh, thanks to uh, thanks to the coaches there, Conrad Ray and Walter Chun. Great stuff.